Patch 13.8 has been out on the live servers for about four to five days now. And quite honestly, I can personally say that this is one of my favorite patches of TFT to date because we are experiencing what is probably one of the most balanced patches of TFT we've seen in a pretty long time. Yes, I know. Multi-Shock Haisa, Winds of the Wander Yasuo. Yes, these do feel a bit oppressive. But, I mean, compare this to freaking Hacker Gadgetine Nar from last patch. Hacker LeBlanc and all this crap that we had to deal with before. It doesn't feel nearly as bad as before. And quite honestly, there are so many other comps, so many top fourable boards that are available at your disposal that, like, you have so many options to pivot out and still snag your top fours. It's a very skill-expressive patch that we're currently in. Now, this also means something that we should be focusing on, right? Which is that because we have so many options at our disposal, this patch is really testing your fundamentals. More specifically, it's testing your ability to not only scout, but being able to pivot out of a board in case you realize that, hey, I have multi shot Kaisa. This other dickhead has multi shot Kaisa. And this other guy has Kaisa's freaking support augment, reconnaissance, whatever. And then this other guy is playing Bunny Mercenary. Holy crap, I'm getting Omega Contessa for quick draws. How do I get out of this? How do I get out of my board? I have a Ginsu shift slam. What do I do? Right? So, I mean, obviously, play TF, but we'll talk about that later. All right. In today's video, we'll be going over part one, actually, of my meta analysis for 13.8. And this video will be broken down into two parts because of. Again, like I said before, the plethora, the cornucopia of options, of boards that you have available to you in this current patch. And there are so many things to talk about and so many variations and cool lines that we can discuss that if I put this in all one video, it would take way too long. So this will be part one and part two will be out probably tomorrow. Now, again, this video is a meta analysis. It is not a tier list, okay? This means that we'll be going over why certain lines are particular why certain things like we're not gonna go over every single comp we can't do that there's too many but why certain lines are particular what certain lines you should be privy of and what are some other different niche variations that you can play that can still snag you out of difficult situations and manage to still hit that top four but before we jump into the meta analysis let's just quickly talk about what we're going to be talking about in both part one and part two of the analysis Part one, gonna be going over Winds of the Wander, everyone's favorite, Yahoo, whatever. But there's a very interesting variation that exists within it that I wanna talk about, as well as mascot line in general, because there's a lot of cool variations in there as well. Gadgetine with a new Sona Flex option and the Mech Flex boards. Now, part two, we'll be going over Kaisa, Infinity, Minima Squad, Lulu Reroll, and Ash Reroll. And the asterisks are there because they are related in some way, but again, we'll talk about that later. And we'll talk about that in part two tomorrow. But now, let's just get on to the video and let's first talk about Winds of the Wander, the everybody's favorite, just everyone's favorite dog shit comp. I'm gonna be honest. If you play this, you're kind of a degen, but like, I don't blame you because I've played it too. And it's it's a strong board. It's a strong board. Everybody knows how this board works, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it. But you reroll at six, you hit your Yasuo two, your Malphite two, Fiora two, Listen two, GP two, Vayne two, whatever. And then itemize Yasuo, obviously, JG, Hodge, QSS, Gunblade, BT, Titans, all of these are great. And slow roll at 6, hit Fiora 3, Malphite 3, Yasuo 3, one shot the board, Yippie Kaye, you push levels after that. Woohoo. Or we know. Okay, so why do I want to talk about this today? What do you do if you're contested? That's what I want to talk about. Because whenever people pick up Winds of the Wanderer, and then they're like, hey, I'm just going to get a free first, whatever, cool. And then they just pick the augment, then they scout the lobby, which by the way, you should be doing the inverse, but... Some of y'all are built backwards, so you don't do that. And then what ends up happening is that you scout and then you go, Oh my god! I have Winds of the Wanderer. This guy has Winds of the Wanderer. And then this other guy has Winds of the Wanderer. Why didn't any of these guys scout? But then you just don't know that they picked before you did and then you just didn't scout. So, uh-oh, predicament. What do you do? What do you do? Uh-oh, Mayday. What do you do? Okay, so let's talk about it, right? A lot of people will try to play Vertical Duelists. They'll say, fuck it. Fuck Yasuo, uh, fuck Yasuo 3, I'm not ever hitting that shit because I got like 7 people contesting me. How about I just play Vertical Duelist? Uh, one problem, 6 Duelist is fucking ass. Let me just pull it up for you real quick, but, let's see, 6 Duelist, boom, where the fuck is it? 8 Duelist is actually kind of good, kind of good, need a spat, kind of hard to hit, but uh, 6 Duelist, ooh. 4.67, 46% percent top 4 rate. If you don't hit that crest or emblem, you are giga-fucked. You're giga-fucked. So another line might exist. You're like, oh, why not laser core? Just play vertical laser core. Problem. You are itemizing your Yasuo. 
and then you're gonna need to itemize your Warwick. But then you have itemized a unit that you aren't planning on 3-starring, which is a Yasuo 2, which is just not gonna do jack shit in stage 4 and above. Once it's stage 4, that Yasuo 2 is dog shit. It's useless. So, that's not great. And you itemized it? You could have itemized anything else. And you chose to itemize this Yasuo 2 that's not gonna do dog shit. It's, it's terrible. You're gonna go last. So, what do you do? What do you do, right? Well, in order to understand exactly how this line works, we need to quickly go over how mascots work. Now, I gotta give credit where credit's due. Silas DV's mascots comp guide for patch 13.7. This could also say 13.8. This still holds up. If you wanna know how to play mascots and you need a more in-depth guide as to how to do it, I will link this in the description below. Great, great comp guide that I highly recommend. It's very concise and very, very in-depth. But I will give you a quick watered down version because some of you might not click into it because you are lazy. And I understand that. But again, don't. You, you should look into it though. You should do your research. All right. But I'll give you a quick watered down version. The idea is simple. Loose streak all stage two. On three to two, send it. Hit Malphite two. Alistar two. Nasus two. Pike two. Morg two. Vex two. Why the Pike two? Pike two? This thing has no traits active. Hello. No Rithwalker, no hacker. What the fuck, right? Well, Pike 2 is actually a really strong unit. It, without any of the traits, it's great. And if you've ever played Built Different before, and you know the optimal comp for Built Different, you might know the Pike 2, and actually having two Pike 2s is one of the strongest Built Different boards that you can have, even without Double Trouble. Because the idea is that, hey, even without traits, it just got to cast Crisscross Applesauce. If you got two on your board, hello, the entire board CC'd. What can they do? So Pike 2 is always a great unit to just splash in if you have nothing else to put into your board. And the Pike 2 actually plays a role, as you may have guessed, with Riftwalker because you get to play the Jin. Suddenly you got four mascots, drop Nasus, and you can just flex this Rammus in here. Bing chilling. Obviously, the first variation is when you hit that mascot crest. You can tech the Nasus back in, fuck a Rammus, and just slam that mascot crest onto Pike. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom, level seven, six mascot in the room. Okay? Now, there's a second variation. And again, the second variation, I gotta give credit where credit is due. And here it is U slash Galactus. I don't know why I said U slash. His name is Galactus. He's a Brazilian player and Grandmaster. Totally great guy. And again, goes in depth about the Ramus comp. If you wanna look into it, this is quite literally an okay comp. Now, I will say this though it's kind of mid. It's okay. It gets the job done. If you don't have any, if you're already playing mascots and you just don't hit any of your augments for whatever reason, you could play into this. But quite honestly, if you hit Rock Solid, or if you hit, which is, by the way, sorry, Malphite's carry augment, or Vex's Endless Darkness, which is his support augment, 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 sorry, those are significantly better. And you should rely on those. But if you want to spice it up, you could try to play Spice Shell. Especially if you have like a Malphite 1, Vex 1. Or, uh, well, if you have like a, well, no, but then you just play Endless Darkness anyways. The point is, this comp, it's, it's, it's if you want to spice it up. Or if you have like a lot of Ramuses, then sure, maybe. But the reality is, is that all you're doing is that on level 7, um, you're just slow rolling and trying to hit this Ramus 3 as well. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I will say this though, and again, it's an okay comp. And no pun intended, but quite honestly, like this top four rate's kind of abysmal. Uh, four point six average is not very great. Sure, it has a very high delta. It works better in this mascot board compared to other comps, but it's not that great in general. Again, rock solid is better. Endless darkness is better. And if you have mascots on your board, there's a very very high chance you hit those augments anyways. But now that we've gone over the sort of the game plan and how mascots work, we can talk about this third variation, the wander variation. You might be, you might be going like, oh, what's the wander variation? Well. Winds of the Wanderer with mascots. What? Now, this board, again, it's it's a board you want to play if you're heavily contested for Yasuos. The idea is simple. Same exact game plan as playing vertical mascots. You just, you go to 3-2, lose streak all the way there, just like you would with Winds of the Wanderer. And you just, 3-2, send it. 2-star Alistar, 2-star Malphite, 2-star Nasus, 2-star Vex. Perfect. Bada bing, bada boom. What about the other two that need to be in the room? Same joke twice, oops. Uh, instead of Morgana, <laughs> instead of Morgana, instead of Nas, instead of the other guy, Pike. Uh, Yasuo 2, Fiora 2. This board will streak you all of stage 3. You get 2 star of basically everything here. Uh, the important ones being Vex, Yasuo, Fiora, Malphite. The other two, 1 star, whatever. But these are the important ones that you really want to hit. But if you are, if you manage to hit these, this board's going to streak. 
It's gonna shoot all stage three. Stage three with Winds of the Wonder Yasuo two, especially if it's itemized a little bit. You don't want to itemize it fully, by the way. You want to itemize like a one item, ish. Um, it'll streak you basically all stage three. It'll you you'll get through stage three perfectly fine, and ideally you want to be itemizing your Vex as well. But I mean, if you're hitting all the assholes, just itemize the fucking Yasuo. But if you know, play it by ear. If you're you know, you have your Vex too, and you have like Archangels, probably slam it on the Vex instead, right? Or you have a blue buff, slam it on Vex. Now, level 7, you are, again, you Econ from 3-2 all the way back up to 4-1. Send it again, and you're trying to hit 2-star everything. Trying to 2-star Yas, 2-star Malphite. Um, you should already have the 2-star Yasuo, the 2-star Fiora should be already there, the 2-star Vex should be there. 2-star Malphite, 2-star Pike, and maybe a 1-star Jin. Level 7, slow roll. Just play what you hit. Uh, look for the Vex 3s. You want the Malphite 3, Vex 3. These are the big ones. The big ticket is a Mike, uh, not Mike, Pike 3. That's that's a name for him. Pike 3, also great. Could hit 3 star Pike is really, really strong to have on your board. Yasuo 3, if you have managed to find it, really, really strong. And it works really well with mascots. Now, why does it work so well? The idea is really simple. This is just a CC bot. If you have Yasuo 2 on your board, you don't hit the Yasuo 3 because you probably won't because, again, you're being contested. This is just like another pike. It's just another pike. It's basically just Yasuo 2. He goes here. Boom. Cast hits everything, right? Not going to do a lot of damage. But it's providing a lot of CC for your Vex, which is really, really nice to have. And the Fiora, this is really just for the traits as well. But quite honestly, if you hit like a mascot crest, or you don't even need it really. If you hit a mascot crest, just play six mascots. Just make like mascot pike. And then you just take in the Nasus here. Six mascot. Don't hit the mascot crest. That's okay. After you hit your three stars that are important, again, it being the Malphite 3, the Vex 3, and ideally one more, but it doesn't have to be it. Malphite 3, Vex 3 is enough to really carry you out, to be honest. After that, go level 8, take in Nasus, take in Nunu, drop the Fiora. Boom. Six mascot. This Yasuo, yeah, it's traitless. But it's just like, it was basically like the Pike from earlier. Yeah, it's traitless, but it's going to provide a lot of CC. And if you can find a replacement, then you just pop those items off, throw it on somebody else. Maybe Pike 3 that you hit, or maybe, I don't know. Put it on a Morgana if you're going to flex Morgana. It doesn't matter. The point is, if you are contested for Winds of the Wanderer, this is a very, very nice out to have or a nice variation of the mascot board in case you're stuck and you just can't seem to find a way out. Moving on. Gadgetine. Now, everybody knows Gadgetine. We all hate Gadgetine, especially during the last patch. Now it's okay. It's better. We all know how you play. 2-1, you hit the crest or you hit the heart. Bada bing, bada boom. 5 Gadgetine, streak it out, Nard 2 on 3-2 because you're rolling down trying to hit everything. Really easy, simple board to play. We already know that the first variation includes the LeBlanc where you're not hitting the Nards, but you're hitting a crowd load of LeBlancs. You just play LeBlanc carry instead. And sure, it's fine. Not that great, but it's fine. But quite honestly, you don't even really need to do this to be honest. If you have the Gadgetine Crest, you could just do something like this, put Nard back here and put this thing on here. And just play LeBlanc 3-star just in the back line. That's fine. This is like a out, if you will. But quite honestly, like you should never really have aim assist in this scenario. Because again, you have 4 rerolls. And the odds of you not hitting a Nar augment or a Shen augment even, really low. Really fucking low. So, sure. We know these lines. We're very, very aware of these lines. So what is the Sona variation? The Sona variation is a variation where you don't play hacker. You don't play Hacker Nar. What? You don't play the Hacker Nar? Yeah, you don't. You actually, instead, you are actually rolling for the Sona 3 and Morg 3 along with Nar 3 at level 7. And this is a really interesting board. It's a really interesting board. It, surprisingly enough, when you have, this doesn't have to be Garen. It could be like a Rel 2. doesn't matter. It could be Rel 2, Shen 2. Um, this is probably a Lulu at level 6. Right? And you're doing your 3-2 roll down. You could just have a Nar 2 here. This Nar 2 here. This Sona 2. This Morg 2. Lulu here instead of this uh, Nunu. And you would be surprised that like this board, like surprisingly enough, is it's good enough. It's good enough. It's actually strong enough. Gadgetine. It's actually, sorry, I couldn't find it. The It's actually strong enough to streak you throughout stage 3, which is an important stage because the whole goal of rolling down on 3-2 is to make sure that your board is able to streak throughout all the stage 3, so you can again send it to level 7, uh, 4, 1, and roll down, stabilize again, and then econ back up, look for the Nar 3, and whatever 3 stars you're looking for. It's great because Sona works really well, because it basically supports everybody from the backline. 
uh, because you also get heart with Lulu until you hit that Nudu. So you're ramping up AP, so Sona's gonna eventually just keep doing more and more damage over time. Morgana's great because she's, again, gives Shred, gives CC, and like Nara can just start working towards the backline and work front to back. It works out pretty well. And I actually did not think this comp would do so well until somebody from my community actually pointed out that, hey, Dish Soap played this comp. Rank 1 North America played this comp and actually says that he prefers this variation over the Haku variation, assuming you're hitting a lot of Sonos. But, you know... Uh huh? I've never tested this comp with the Sona variation, but, I mean, hey, if Dish Soap's saying it's good, it's probably good. I will say this, though. Um, I will link this VOD in the description below if you want to go watch it. Uh, but I'm going to be real. He does high roll quite a bit in this game. And I know I said that about the Soju game a while back with the Brawler stuff. But I will say this again. Just because he high rolls doesn't mean that you can't play this line. You can totally play this line totally fine. If we roll at 7, it's good. He does high roll a bit in this game. If you watch it, you'll understand. But what I'm saying is this. It's definitely a line you shouldn't sleep on. You hit a lot of Sonas with a lot of Nars. Totally viable line. Totally playable. Definitely recommend looking into it. I think it is a terrific variation towards the hacker meta. And again, especially when like you're playing into the late game with Nar, Dish Soap says this throughout the VOD, so you'll hear him say this a lot, but you want to take out a hacker eventually because the idea is that, hey, your opponent's going to acclimate. He's going to know you're playing into hacker. He just clumps his units. There's nothing you can really do. So again, really, really great watch. I highly recommend looking into this VOD, just seeing how it plays out. And again, it'll be linked in the description below. Finally, for today, we're going to be talking about Mech Flex. And as you can guess, uh, it's a pretty simple line. It's just you guarantee frontline flex the backline. Now here is the thing about this line that some people, especially in gold or plaid, they're gonna fuck this up. This is a level seven line. What does that mean? Level seven lines means that you are rolling down on seven, and usually, level seven lines are reroll lines. Stuff like reroll Vex, reroll Nar, reroll LeBlanc, reroll. Oh, uh, what are some three other three costs? Reroll, re -roll Kaisa. These are all level seven boards, right? But they're rerolls. They're seven boards because you're rerolling for three costs, right? Garen two on seven is a bit of a high roll, can't lie. But the idea is simple. Level seven actually gives you just enough odds to probably at least hit one of the four costs you're looking for. And assuming that you're playing flexibly, um, this is something that you should be playing if you happen to hit the Garens. Like, not, I'm not saying you happen to hit Garen 2 by, like, level 16 natural. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that if you have, like, a Garen, maybe even a pair, and you're like, I have no idea where the direction of my board is going because I have three tank items and I have no damage items. I only have a guard breaker. This is a line you can consider. Now, this line's really good for a lot of reasons. One, you have so much flexibility in the back line here. So much flexibility. You can play, like, anything you want back here. But for today, we're going to talk about the three most... I would say reliable lines when it comes to playing around the mech Garen. And it's great because since it's a level 7 board, you're sort of hail marrying it here at this point because when you don't have direction by like 4-1, you you need direction. If you don't know where your board's going, you're just going to bleed out and you're going to go away because you didn't know what to do, right? So when you don't have direction, mech flex, really great to just rely on whenever you really need it. And you just, you're like, hey, I don't know where I'm going. Let me just flex whatever units I hit for the back line and I'll just have a Garen front line. The only thing I will say is this. Stage 4, maybe you can get away with a Garen 1 mech with 3 items on it, but you really do need Garen 2 by Stage 5. Garen 2 mech versus Garen 1 mech, it's like, it's it's night and day. It's night and day. It is a 4-year-old versus a 24-year-old in a soccer match. It's a friendly match, but Jesus Christ, this 4-year-old is getting curb stomped. Alright? You need mech, if you're going to mech anything, you need 2 start. You need a 2 start. It's, it's completely different, it's not even close. So... Make sure you prioritize that and keep that in mind. Now, with that being said, let's talk over the first variation, which is Sure Shots. Now, Sure Shots, very simple. Flex the mirror in the back line. Very great. You actually have two open slots here. And I will say this. Um, the stats on this is crazy. Three Sure Shot, and if you have a Garen 2, congratulations, you're probably averaging a 3.8. Oh my god. Oh my god. Obviously, if we split by star level, we can see here that, hey, you need that Samira 2 to hit that, you know, really great average. But quite honestly, like even Samira 1, okay, Samira 1's pretty bad. But I mean, you shouldn't be relying on Samira 1. You should be rolling down and flexing whatever you hit, right? Pretty, pretty good. But you should be hitting that 3 sure shot. And again, 3 sure shot, 4 sure shot, the stats are great. Averaging a 3.87, averaging a 3.88. It's bada bing, bada boom, you're chilling. Like these are all great. But again, you need that guarantee 2 star. You need that guarantee 2 star, it's so important. And you can flex, again, flex whatever you want here. You don't want to play 2, two sure shot, I will say that. It's definitely 3 or 4. Um, 
But with that being said, here's an example board. Let's say you roll down level seven. Um, pretty high roll to hit a Garen two. You're probably only hitting like a Samira one here. Um, but this is fine as well. This will stabilize you throughout all stage four, really. Uh, and then you just eco back up, and then you can go level eight, roll again. Totally fine. Looking for the Morgana, you have the three sure shot here. Very, very simple. If you high roll an Ezreal, congratulations, play four sure shot. Still, you should itemize the Samira over the Ezreal because a Samira, it's a lot easier to hit Samira 2 than it is to hit Ezreal 2, especially on level 7 and level 8 when you push back up and you're sort of, your econ back up, but now you don't have that much to roll down on. You, it's better to try to rely on the Samira 2 rather than the Ezreal, the Ezreal. Obvious basic stuff, fundamentals, great. Moving on. Second variation, as you can see in the name of the tab, it's quick job. Pretty, again, obvious how it works. But just to ver just to clarify real quick, uh, four quick draw is a little worse than sure shot. Slightly worse, just, just a little bit, just a little bit worse. So because it's a little bit, just a hair worse, if you have no direction at all, maybe try to lean sure shot if you can. But if you you hit like what you hit like MF two at level seven, just fucking play MF two. You know it's not that much worse that like you have to be like, ooh, I have a Samira pair, but I have MF two. What do I do? You drop the fucking Samiras, play the MF two, and play that quick draw line. I mean, unless you have eighty items, then you know don't don't grief yourself. Don't do that. That would be bad. But anyways, as you can guess. Four quick draw means that you're playing around an MF2 carry and you're playing around, I mean, dude, it's, it's fucking obvious. It's four quick draw. Like, what, do I need to explain more? Um, oh, I will say this though. If you're playing mech frontline, the best augment you can ever hit is second win two. Not even close. Second win two. Second win two is great for very obvious reasons. The mech Garen just goes all the way down to like 20% HP after 10 seconds. Boom. Heals basically like almost up to full. It's crazy how good second win two is when you're ever playing mech frontline. And if you hit second win two, early in the game, you can think to yourself, hey, there's a really good chance I'm playing mech this game. Just a little tip. Moving on, um, if you do roll down on seven and you're setting it down, trying to hit that guarantee, trying to stabilize your board because you don't know where you're going, but you find a lot of Kaisas along the way down, Kaisa three with three mech is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, as you can see here, averaging a 2.6 if you have a Kaisa three. Um, again, this is assuming that you have the guarantee. So this is like by the end of the game. You know what I mean? But if you find yourself with a lot of Kaisas on the way down and you have like a Garen 2, I mean, if you have the mech units, just mech it until you find the, the Star Guardian units and then you can pivot off. But quite honestly, at that point, you might as well just play mech frontline and it's totally fine. It's totally viable, totally, totally strong. I mean, 83 percentile four rate, holy shit. But again, this is with Kaisa 3, Garen 2, and you know, you have the setup. But again, this board, it's all about playing around trying to hit those, you know, trying to hit whatever you can, trying to flex around whatever you can. The mech frontline, the mech flex is really a, I won't say it's a Hail Mary, but unless you're being offered like a Garen pair and like maybe a Samira before you even start rolling, it's it's a bit of a Hail Mary. But again, this is sort of that thing, that last dish effort that you can sort of fall back on in case you really have no idea where the hell you're going. By 4-1, you don't know where you're going, you, you, need, you need help. You fucking, you need help. All right, but again, as you may know, Kaisa prefers two quick draw over four quick draw. So the last two units here that would have been Lucian Ezreal, flex it. Echo Alistar is probably the best here. It gives your Garen Aegis, but it also gives you Star Guardian. Terrific. Bravo. Very cool. The last one I want to talk about, the last variation, is with threats. And this is the one that I think less people are sort of privy to. It makes sense when we talk about it out loud, but you might forget about it in the heat of the moment. Uh... Flex whatever the fuck threats you hit. Pretty simple. If you have Morg 2, Aesol 1, just Morg 2 carry items until you hit Aesol 2. Very simple. And then if you are sort of unsure as to what to play, just play more threats. This, you can play another Aesol. You can play another Urgot. Another Belvussy. I wouldn't play another Belvussy. I would play probably like a Ramus or like a Morgana, something with utility. If it's a one star with no items, makes more sense. But, and again, if you have 80 items, but you're trying to lean sure shot, didn't hit the sure shots, but hit Belva 2, just play Belva 2. Play Belveth 2, flex in the Aesols, flex in maybe another Belveth or whatever. And the fun thing is about this comp is that a lot of people don't actually play around threats too often. They do sometimes, don't get me wrong, they definitely do sometimes. But it's definitely less frequent than lines like TF, lines like Nico, lines like Misfortune. People want those four costs instead of Aesol. Aesol sort of like people sort of last dish, last effort resort. But again, like I've said in the previous meta analysis in 13.7, Aesol's a great unit. 
You hit extinction event. This is a crazy strong unit. It's so good. It's you don't even need extinction event to be completely honest. It's by the way, extinction event. If you don't know, is Aesol's carry augment. But quite honestly, you don't even need that. And it's 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 a great unit. Now I will say though that just based off the stats, um, Aesol two, slightly. Just a hair, slightly, slightly better than Samira. Slight, or not Samira, sorry, Balveth. Slightly, 3.9 versus 3.8. If you have a two-star Aesol, two-star Garen versus two-star Garen, two-star Balveth. But it's so slight, it's so slight. So like, quite honestly, play what you hit. Is this, the mech flex is so flexible. It's, it's, easy, it's easily the most flexible out of anything that we have. So again, no direction, no idea what to do. I hit like two Aesols, one MF, and like what Nico, what the fuck do I do from this spot? Just play the Aesol. Just play the fucking Aesol, it's fine. And then just from there, flex it out. Totally okay. And you will probably snag your top four. Very, very strong board. Anyways, that's it for part one. I know uh it seems a little quicker, but quite honestly, the this is like my fourth time recording this, and so like I and I'm starving, I wanna eat. So uh I kinda went by a little quickly, but if you got any questions, you know where the comment section is. And yeah, that's it for part one. I'll see you guys in part two. Take care, guys. Happy climbing.